Hey, man. Hey. What are you working on there? Oh, the guys at the church asked me to copy up a new copy of the gospel, so... Oh, right. Whoa, that's a lot of work, man. <laughs> it's going to take ages. Oof. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. So, you're going to just copy it up word for word, then? Uh, yeah. Like, keeping everything the same? Well, as best I can, yeah. I mean, everyone makes a few copying errors, but hopefully mine won't be the kind that change the meaning of anything. <laughs> right, so you're not thinking of leaving anything out or fixing up any parts? Dude, it's the historically accurate account of Jesus' life and ministry written by an eyewitness. <laughs> Why would anything need to be changed or left out? Well, yeah, it's great, but writing up another copy just seems like an opportunity to improve things a bit, that's all. At least dropping a few things out. Why leave things out? Well, I think there are things in there that are off-putting to a very large potential audience. And if we want the thing to grow... What, the hardcore Orthodox crew? Man, you're never going to nah, convince man, them. Man, screw those guys. You're not thinking big enough. Well, how big should I be thinking? Haven't you ever imagined where this could go if it was more appealing to a Roman audience? <laughs> <laughs> I admire your ambition, man, but have you ever read this? Rome is pretty much the enemy here. <laughs> yeah, but think of what could happen if you did. Look, here are these Roman soldiers bashing Jesus and spitting on him. Well, see, that's exactly what I mean. You just leave that out, see? Don't include that bit in the copy you make. It'll be like it never happened. <laughs> even if I did, what about that saddest pilot? He has Jesus flogged even though he can't find a reason to. Well, leave that out too. <laughs> but it happened. That doesn't mean you have to mention it. Just because something isn't mentioned doesn't mean that you're saying it didn't happen. Yeah, but hold on. And like, it works both ways, too, if you think about it. Did the Gospel author mention anything about how Pilate tried really hard to get Jesus off the hook and kept insisting again and again that he thought Jesus was innocent and oughtn't be killed? What? There's nothing in the Gospel about that. Yeah, well, see, that's what I'm saying. He appears to have left that out. But that doesn't mean it didn't happen, so you could include that. It's, hang on, so you want to insert something new and simply claim that the original author decided to leave it out? <laughs> That's not how it works, man. Sure it is, man. You're running up a new copy. You can put whatever you want. Focus the blame away from Rome and more on the Jewish chief priests and leaders. Emphasize harder that they were pushing for Jesus to be killed, and it wouldn't be hard to make it look like Pilate was actually on Jesus' side. Uh, wouldn't that kind of be changing the story? If Pilate was friendly, why doesn't the gospel author mention it? No, it's not really changing the story. It's just giving a slightly different perspective that Romans might like. That's all. all right? And later, when you mention Paul, his being a Roman citizen Paul? will say a lot. He's not involved in the gospel story? Yeah, it'd be good if you could include him, though. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're really talking about rewriting the gospel. We've already got a gospel. What's in it is true. Why would we need another one decades later with different information to what we already know? Yeah, but we all know there are all sorts of conflicting versions floating around. You can claim to have gotten this new information from a good, reliable source. <laughs> but the gospel is the reliable source. This is the truth of what happened. I'm not rewriting the truth. I'm not rewriting, just giving a slightly different interpretation of things, and you'll end up with a more appealing story. I mean, obviously, Jesus' life story needs a stronger finish. A what? A much stronger finish. I never understood why Jesus goes from being this tough guy, you know, doing battle with Satan in the wilderness, fighting demons, challenging the authorities, getting angry at people, ordering people around, and then when things start going wrong for him at the end, what does this charismatic and intimidating leader do? He shuts his mouth, folds, and becomes this passive, defeated, I mean, almost kind of pathetic character. I mean, look at him here in the garden. This heroic leader is uh, deeply distressed, troubled, overwhelmed with sorrow. He falls to the ground and begs God to spare him. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better to have him showing a bit more fortitude? Make him a bit more confident, self-assured. Oh, no, no, no. See, you're not looking at it right. It's saying that even the Son of God had to endure terrible hardship and suffering. He submitted to it fully, allowed it to happen, and it conveys what a terrible burden he was carrying on our behalf. Come on, man, doesn't it just fill you with groveling guilt? Yeah, but he's just so passive. From Gethsemane to his death, he just basically says nothing. People are mocking him and bashing him. He doesn't even attempt to come back. He's not meant to. And look at him cry out as he dies. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even God abandons him and he just folds, gets killed, is buried. And that's about the last you see of him. Come on, man, you're not going to write up the same thing again in your copy, are you? <laughs> but that's what happened. He has to suffer and die for the theology to make sense. Of course he has to die, but you should frame it so that he's facing it on his terms. Calm and in control, 
Not just passively letting them do whatever they want. Well, look, yes, I'm sure that would make him a more appealing character in some ways, but I'm not going to rewrite history. It'd just be a couple of minor details you can tweak, even starting right back at the garden. Right When he prays, he shouldn't fall down overwhelmed with sorrow. He should kneel deliberately to pray. Go on, you could change that. That's just a word choice thing, man. Yeah, but would it be true? Of course it would. Oh, come on, man, nobody would even notice that on its own. Well... Yeah, I guess that's not too much of a change. And have him pray just once, not up and down three times like a yo-yo. The whole time from then on, he ought to be talking more too. With who? His followers were gone. Okay, we'll bring him back. Bring them back? Yeah, if you have some supporters near him, you could have him talking to them and downplaying how bad his situation is. Like it's easy for him instead of it breaking him. Who else is around? We want more dialogues that we can use to present him as having a grip on things. Well, you, you can't. There, there's only his Jewish enemies, random passers-by, the other criminals, and the We'll guards. have one of the criminals show a bit of respect so Jesus can come back with some encouraging words for him. But the, the, there's no mention of that. And the guards, too. You want him friendly with the guards? Well, no, that wouldn't work, I guess. But instead of just copying it from them passively, you could have him pray out loud for their forgiveness, see? Like, he knows more than they do about what's really going hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's talking too much. You're really changing his character, man. Like, he's a different person or something. And when he dies, don't have him despairing and defeated. He should call out confidently something like, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. <laughs> like, it's his choice what he's doing. Totally in control, man. That's a victory. But he didn't say that. Look, he said, why have you forsaken me? You can't just go and contradict that. It wouldn't be a contradiction. Of course it would. Look, he probably said both, but the author here only included the defeated, despairing one. You're <laughs> adding facts, altering the story, changing his no, character. No, no, no. Yes, you are. You're basically suggesting that I write a separate gospel and have it include contradictory information to what we've got. It wouldn't contradict, man. It's practically the same. Come on, man, it's just tiny Did he details. call out victorious and in control after chit-chatting all the way? Or did he wail something despairing after keeping quiet the whole time? You can't have both. Those two things just complement each other. They're in complete harmony. The gospel author makes it clear that Jesus didn't ever talk except to incriminate himself, right? That's the truth. The rest of the time, he's suffering in silence and then dying distraught and oh, broken. Come on, man. It's just a different interpretation from a different viewpoint or something. Just say that you asked around and got a few alternative facts from other people who were there and thought that they should be included. Leaving things out is one thing, but adding all this stuff throughout the crucifixion, man, that's going too far. Oh, well, if you're happy leaving things out, there's lots more to drop that would really enhance things. Oh, pray tell. Since you know better than the gospel author... What else did he mistakenly include that we should leave out? Well, Jesus should be in better control of his temper generally, don't you think? What? Well, he keeps getting pissed off all the time, man. Haven't you noticed? Look here. He's going to heal this guy with a shriveled hand. Great. But first, he's got to look around at everyone in anger? Well, of course he does. They're trying to get him killed for doing work on the Sabbath. Uh, the anger is an unnecessary detail. And look over here. Here he is angry at his disciples. He's angry because they're turning away all these people who want to bring their kids up to him. But again, why mention anger? It's not a good look. And over here, look, Jesus lashes out angrily at Peter and calls him Satan. So? He gets angry sometimes. So what? Well, he shouldn't. It's very unedifying. He even gets angry at vegetation. Well, who doesn't every now and then? He needs to chill out. What have you got there when he's healing the guy with leprosy? More anger? Um, let's see. Uh, here, a guy comes up begging to be healed. Jesus feels compassion and heals him. There, compassion. Hmm, interesting. Someone's already changed that. Changed what? In some earlier manuscripts of that story, Jesus gets angry at him and then heals him. Why would he get angry? <laughs> well, that's exactly the point. He's got issues, man. That's probably why the version you've got there has been changed already. Well, uh, hang on, hang on. Which ones came first? The ones where he's angry or the ones where he's compassionate? What's in the original? Who knows, man? Scholars will no doubt still be thinking about that little chestnut thousands of years from now. <sighs> what am I going to write? Anger or compassion? Well, just don't mention either. That'll solve that problem. And in all those other cases too, just leave out any mention of him being angry. Each time? Yeah, leave it out. So systematically leave out references to him being angry? Yep, it'll improve his character if you do. And leave out that he called Peter Satan. That's very unfriendly. And please leave out the story of him getting pissed off at a tree. I was just going to write up these stories word for word. 
You still can, most of them. Just skip out any mention of him getting angry. Ah, wait. Ah, what about when he goes through the temple in Jerusalem turning tables over and causing chaos? He's pretty angry there, and I can't leave that out or the story won't make any sense. True. Uh, you could downplay it, though. Leave out the violent imagery with tables being overturned and just say that he drove the merchants out as short as you possibly can. Just leave it at that. People are going to notice this, man. It'll be a bit obvious if there's a consistent series of changes along a similar theme. I think you're overestimating how critically people are going to read these documents. Yeah, maybe. But look, stop. Just, just Even if I was to change all this stuff, make Rome look better, blame the Jews more, make Jesus approach his death in a completely different way, and systematically leave out mentions of him being angry, do you really think that's going to draw more people to the movement? <laughs> just that? No way! We're just getting started, man. If this Jesus movement is going to take off in Rome, it's got to be less Jewish. Less Jewish. Yeah. So you're racist and anti-Semitic. Dude, it's a Jewish guy teaching Jewish people from the Jewish tradition in Judea and Samaria and Galilee. Yeah, I get that, man. But your version has got to pitch it beyond that out into the Gentile world. How? Well, we've already seen how. Think about how much better Paul did than the disciples. He separated it from Judaism as far as he could. He even boasted about the disagreements he had with the disciples over how Jewish they kept things, and the Gentiles lapped his version up. Painted as though his version of Christianity was the next logical step after Jesus. But it wasn't. The next step was Jesus' brother James becoming leader of the movement. Oh God, don't even mention James. Focus everything away from those guys and onto Paul. But that's changing history. No, it's just deliberately writing people out of history. I mean, yeah, but Paul I mean, himself wrote about James leading the church. I'd have to mention it somewhere. Look, the point is just don't mention Jesus' brother any more than you absolutely have to. If you can disconnect the narrative from James and the church he led and present everything as flowing towards Paul's Gentile-centered version of Christianity, that'll do a lot to make the whole thing less Jewish. But again, look, even if I did manage to pull that off, you can't escape the fact that it's Jewish from beginning to end. Rome will never go for it, man. Your no, whole no, no, plan no. is What bullshit. you do is rearrange the whole thing as a grand narrative of Jesus and his movement coming out of Judaism. Like physically, geographically out from the Jewish wilderness up there in Galilee that the Romans are instinctively suspicious about, move it quickly into the city that they're familiar with because they actually rule it, and then directly out into the Gentile world from there via Paul the Roman. Shift the order of things around if you have to, change the location of events, whatever. Just get Jesus on a one-way journey out of Galilee. But after the resurrection, the disciples all go straight back to Galilee to meet Jesus. So the resurrection Shit. of Jesus... Do they? Where does it say that? Um... Uh, the young man in the tomb says, Jesus is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Oh, no, 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 no. The sightings of Jesus have got to be in Jerusalem. Uh, they weren't, so... Uh... Oh, come on, man. The gospel cuts out before any post-resurrection meetings ever happen anyway. Come on, you can change that to whatever you want. Just keep them in Jerusalem. But everyone knows the Jesus movement came up out of Galilee. Haven't you heard the stories floating around of Jesus appearing to them on a misty mountain up there? Or the one about him appearing on the Sea of Galilee itself? Screw all those stories, man. They might never get written down anyway. Especially if you can get in first. Look, just leave things in Jerusalem. Don't even mention Galilee anymore. No, no, make it so the message from Jesus himself is that everything is to start in Jerusalem immediately, that very day, not a few days or weeks later. Don't even give those disciples a chance to leave the city. Directly from Jerusalem, out into the world, and on a fast track straight to Rome via Paul. No looking back. It's a winner. I don't know, man. You're talking about major changes. No way, man. If you take this opportunity, we're in with a fighting chance for this to one day take off. Imagine, man, this could one day be accepted in Rome. You have to do this. But don't your ideas contradict completely what's already here? No, they'll be completely accurate and correct at the same time. It could really take off, man. All right, I'll do it. Yes! One more thing, then. Uh, give him a virgin birth with, like, angel visitations and magical stars and shit like that. Oh, what the f***? 